This is the BBC. Hello and welcome to Comedy of the Week. Some of you have come on a long journey to get to this podcast. And for that, I thank you. It's not easy listening to podcasts. You know, you heard about them, you knew you'd like them, but they told you you had to get an app. It didn't make sense at first. You weren't sure about subscribing. Does that mean you'll get a letter through the post? You don't want that. You just want great comedy delivered to you on a weekly basis. You're concerned. But it's okay. You're here. You made it. This week's Comedy of the Week is a gem. A real diamond, hewn from the seams of a mine, polished up and presented to you by a male voice choir singing Bread of Heaven while simultaneously scoring a rugby try. Um, it's set in Wales. So, please forgive me if I get a little over-emotional today or go a bit Welsh, because you may not know, listeners, I am half Welsh. And yes, if you're wondering, it's the bottom half, which is entirely made of dragon. This week's Comedy of the Week is Ankle Tag, a brand new and brilliant sitcom combining the travails of new parenthood with the grim spectre of the penal system. And we're joined today by comedian and star of Ankle Tag, Ellis James, and one of the writers, its radio personality, Gareth Gwynn. Thanks very much. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Hi, guys. Is there anything we need to know about episode one of Ankle Tag, or anything we need to know before we listen to the show, particularly? I think... It's episode one. No, let's just dive straight in. Just dive straight in. Yeah, let's go. That's it. You're not going to give any heads up to what it's about. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I think it, I think I think it it, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Steve Spears puts in an absolutely wonderful performance. I think. And oh, Kate the old is, Kate Wicks is very funny as well. Oh, you're going to have a blast when you listen to it. Yeah, that. Okay. I'm the weak link. <laughs> <laughs> so you recognise my voice. Okay. Then, as long as as long as you know that I'm the weak link, you're prepared right. for it. Do we need an ankle tag to enjoy it, or can anyone with free ankles still find humour in the situation? Uh, you can enjoy this in the comfort of your home, or in a car, oh. or while while moving around. That's fine. Maybe if you're, I don't know, finishing a community service. You have an extra frisson, do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think it's absolutely fine. Okay. But if if uh, if you do have an ankle tag, you know, make sure you get back in time because <laughs> I I've really looked into the details of that, and it's not worth the risk. Right. Great, thank you. Well, please stick around after the show when I'll be talking to Ellis and Gareth again. But for now, relax, make your probation officer a cup of tea and listen up to Ankle Tag. Ankle Tag by Gareth Gwynn and Benjamin Partridge. Alice! Alice! I think the Tesco man's given us someone else's shopping. Oh, mystery shop. Oh, we've had our shopping swapped with someone on a liquid diet. <laughs> oh, no, that is ours. Um, it's our turn to host the people from the NCT tonight. <sighs> we've had the baby. Why do we have to keep seeing them? <laughs> and why have we got all of these dips? Because that's what people do, Griff. They get together and they eat dips. But we don't even like them. Salsa's all right. No, not the dips, the people. <laughs> They just happen to have a baby at the same time as us. It's a very useful support network. No, it's not. It's a bunch of people going through a traumatic experience at the same time, staring into the abyss together. <laughs> like the wives of the Chilean miners. I just want to have a nice evening. Um, oh, are there avocados in there? Because I'm going to make homemade guacamole. Oh, you could write a blog about the NCT group. Uh, no, because then I would have to think about them. <laughs> Who's coming? Um, Anthony and Linda Hunter. Oh, God, Anthony Hunter's so smug. Well, you try being an internationally renowned cellist and not coming over as smug. (laughs) Ooh, look at me with my big violin. (laughs) Ooh, I've got to buy an estate. Who else is coming? It better not be the Paulins. It's the Paulins, yeah. God, they're so depressing. They're not. They are. Yeah, you're right, they are. Last time Trevor managed to put a downer on the fact that polio had been eradicated. He said, well, at least you knew where you were with polio. Well, to give the polio vaccine its due, it's the only disease his wife hasn't had. And Linda might be a bit late because her publishing deadline is at seven. A what? She's an editor at The Guardian. She's a what? You've met her loads of times, Griff. She's an editor at The Guardian. And when you say Guardian... Do you mean just the website? No, no, I think the, the actual paper, yeah. Right, um, we need to get some better dips. Griff. No, no this, this is my chance. I, I'd better update my LinkedIn. I'll get that. You need to concentrate on your guacamole. Hello, son. It's me. It's your dad. Who was that? 
the worm. <laughs> Come on, old son, hey. Give your old man a hug, or at the very least, you know, don't even talk him through the letterbox, hey? Is that, is that your dad? You're meant to be in prison. I'm on day release. Ta da! <laughs> Come on, Griff, open the door. No. Right, well, if you won't, then I will. This is ridiculous. <clears throat> uh, hello? Is this your wife, son? You're punching above your admittedly tiny weight. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm, I'm Alice. You must be Griff's dad. I'm afraid Griff hasn't told me much about you. Yeah, likewise. The only reason I know he's married is because his brother wanted to borrow my suit. Nice suit, too. Shame the wife had thrown it in the river. <laughs> well, it's been nice to see you. Enjoy the rest of your day release. Try not to rip anyone off or destroy any families. Bye. Bye now. But can I come in? We're busy. Alice is making guacamole and I'm sorting out the house. No bother. I'm great at cleaning. You get good at it pretty quickly when there's a toilet in your bedroom. I've always wondered about the toilet in your cell thing. Oh, yeah? yeah blessing or curse? Well, it very much depends on who you're sharing a cell with. If you're sharing with me, it's a definite curse. Oh. <laughs> there we are, Dad. You've met Alice. You've had one of the most revolting conversations I've ever been party to. So maybe now you could leave. Well, I thought you'd be pleased that I'd come to see you. You've been in prison for five years. I haven't visited you once. What about that says, come round for lunch? <laughs> come on, love, invite him in. He's your dad. Yes, he is my dad, but put it this way. If somehow Darth Vader turned up now and said, Griff, I am your father, <laughs> it would be a blessed relief. <laughs> this man didn't just destroy our family and go to prison for a mind-bending level of fraud. He also ruined a family business that had been going for 250 years. It hadn't been going for 250 years, son. That was just one of my ruses. Established 1756 looks great on the side of a van. But think about it. Double glazing simply isn't that old. Oh, yeah. Come on, you've got to bring me up to speed. I don't know the first thing about your lovely wife. For instance, what do you do, love? I work for a charity. Yeah, I was registered as a charity once. <laughs> Amazing how many people will give you the change without looking at what's written on the bucket. Well, now you've met Alice. I imagine you've got some sort of nefarious scheme to be getting on with, so it's goodbye from us. Griff, he seems nice. She's got a point. He's a fraudster, Alice. That is what he does. Yes, but he's not just your dad, is he? He's my father-in-law, who I'd like to get to know. Bob, um, you can come in. Oh, fine. He gets 30 minutes and he's not allowed to meet Caris. Who's Caris? It's a weird name for a dog. <laughs> Oh, has, has Griff not told you? She's your granddaughter. Bloody hell, son. I'm a granddad. Yes, Caris is your granddaughter, biologically speaking. But you won't be meeting her today. What are you worried about, that he's going to sell the baby a conservatory that he never installs? <laughs> OK, he can come in for half an hour. He's spending no more than two minutes with Caris, and then he's out. Come on in, Bob. Ah, it's nice to be inside. And I didn't think I'd ever say that. <laughs> Is she a good sleeper? Oh, uh, depends how much cowpaw I've given her. Ah, uh, that old trick. I used to give it a griff straight from the bottle. Oh, I was joking. Yeah, yeah, me too, yeah. <laughs> she looks just like you, Bob. Aye, uh, aye, uh, she does. Don't say that, Alice. She looks nothing like him. She's got my jeans, son. She's an Evans. She's much better looking than you were as a baby. You look like a hot pig. Come on, Griff. See? Well, she likes her granddad. Granddad? Grandpa? Grampy? What are we, we going to go for? Granddad Bob, Bobbles, Bobbles, Bibbly Bobbly, Bibbly Bobbly. <laughs> Did she just laugh? <laughs> Griff, oh, Karis's first laugh. Bob made her laugh. No, that wasn't a laugh. It was wind, right? Time's up. <laughs> Come here, Karis. That's plenty of time with um, uh, Mr. Evans. <laughs> Oh, come on, time's up. Off you go. Yeah, right. Uh, about that. What? I've got a mate coming round. A mate? Yeah, old mate. Known him for years. And uh, what's he called? Chris. I've never heard of a Chris. Why can't you meet at Chris's house? Well, he lives on a boat. And he's in for a service. <laughs> well, meet him somewhere else. What time's he come, mate? Now. You stay here. I'll get it. Hi there, I'm from Parole and Probation Services to install the ankle tag receiver for the offender at this address. Are you Robert Evans? Psh, right, quick, 
Listen to me. Here's 50 quid. No, you don't have to pay. No, no, I'm bribing you. If anyone asks, you're called Chris, you're my mate, you live on a boat, and you're very shy. Okay, well, most people try and bribe me to put an ankle tag around the foot of a bed or an immobile relative. <laughs> well, in which case, this'll be a piece of cake for you. You pretend you're my mate, and then, when they're not looking, we get the ankle tag on, you install the box and clear off. So whose house is this? My son and daughter-in-law's. We get on great guns. We're like the Waltons. <laughs> so why don't you just tell them that you've given us their address? It's a surprise. I'll tell them all about it once it's installed. Once I can't leave. Ah, I see. And you need to take your name badge off. Why? Because it says Mohammed. <laughs> Alice, Griff, this is my old mate, Chris. Oh, hello, Chris. Oh, honestly, I'm meeting so many new people today. You remember Chris Griff? Me and Chris go back years. I've never seen him before. Yeah, well, thing is, your mum never liked him. Yeah, what a bitch. Yeah, well, easy, mate, easy. <laughs> Sorry, I, I misread the situation. <laughs> so, Chris, how do you know Dad? Uh, we used to go kayaking together. <laughs> kayaking? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I loved kayaking. Chris is book mad. Oh, that sounds nice, doesn't it, Griff? But aren't you scared of water, Dad? Ah, uh, that's why we was in a kayak. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Chris have got a lot of catching up to do. What he's been up to, what I've been up to. Yeah, what's new in kayaks? Other boats. I've recently been on a ferry. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> sounds good. You two go and feed the baby and we'll have a natter. Fine. Chris, don't let him sell you any double glazing. Uh, do you two want any drinks? Oh, thanks, love. I'll have a black coffee and any biscuits you've got. What are you having, Chris? Oh, it's Ramadan. Oh, they won't have that. Just bring him a hobnob. <laughs> We're going to have to turn the fridge off. I can't hear them. I think it's great, actually, that some of his friends have stuck by him. But Chris isn't his friend. Apparently they've known each other for years, but I've never heard of him. When I was a kid, Dad only had two friends, and one of them was an alibi he'd made up. <laughs> Chris is clearly someone Dad met when he was inside. He's not, is he? Oh, I can make up the odd word. I'm pretty sure Chris just said shanked to bits. Well, then, maybe that's a kayaking term. <laughs> I can watch a documentary, did I? I know what it's like. You can leave the prison, but you can never leave the gang. That's probably what Chris is saying right now, before he tells Dad to go and burn down a biker bar. <laughs> Sorry, where was this documentary film? Texas. <laughs> I can't imagine it's any different in British open prisons. God knows what they're doing in there. So, that's your monitoring unit set up. The blue light means it's working. Now it's on, you can't go further than 30 metres from the box between 7pm and 7am. What do you have, boss? As soon as you leave the 30 metre radius or unplug the box, the police will be notified and they'll normally send a car around, sometimes a dog, sadly never a horse. <laughs> right, Chris, Dad, visiting time's over. Why don't you get back in your kayak and what have you done? What's that box? To try and make amends for everything. I got you a present. I got you... Wi-Fi. Happy surfing. Oh, thank you, Bob. That's very thoughtful. Um, but we've already got Wi-Fi. Chris, you better be going. Let's let these two get browsing. I can't. What do you mean? I haven't finished installing the Wi-Fi yet. Of course you have. There it is. No, no, I haven't turned on part of the Wi-Fi yet. What do you mean? Well, I haven't turned on a bit of the Wi-Fi that's around your ankle. <laughs> yes, I, uh, I see. Well, just be quick about what it. What are you two doing? What's that around your leg? There we go. I better be off. Got to get back to the caravan. Don't you mean boat? Uh, yeah, boat. Caravan, pretty much the same. The freedom, chemical toilets, small fridge. <laughs> anyway, got to go. See you, Bill. Bob. Yeah, Bob. <laughs> Bye. What's going on? What's that round your ankle? Well, this. It's an ankle tag, isn't it? I think they're actually called an electronic monitoring ankle bracelet. You don't get an ankle tag on day release, do you? I'm not on day release. I've been released on parole. Oh, well done, Bob. That's, that's good, isn't it, Griff? You were meant to be in for ten years. Let out for good behaviour. You? Good behaviour? Yeah, it turns out in prison the bar for good behaviour is set quite low. <laughs> oh, don't do yourself down. Still an achievement. The week before I'm due to be let out, I have to fill in this form. Let them know what my release address will be. Well, I couldn't go back to your mum. Do you know she married again? Yes, of course I know. Yeah, I, mean, I can understand a divorce in me. But the real kick in the swingers was her marrying my arresting officer from the serious fraud squad. 
<laughs> what a loser. I bet when he uses those self-scan checkouts, he literally scans every item. <laughs> Go on, throw in a pistol, no one's looking. So what happens if I unplug the box? I'll be back in prison before you can say my son's a traitor. Oh, come on, let me stay the weekend, yeah? First thing Monday morning, we'll ring parole, say there's been a mistake, and I'll get him moved. Well, that won't be possible, Dad, because we have our NCT group coming round tonight. NCT? Are they the ones who do car parks? <laughs> um, I know you were boring, but bloody hell. No, it, it's for new parents, Bob. It's antenatal classes. It's a great support network and, you know, dips. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. We didn't bother with any of that when Griff was born. When his man started having contractions, I dropped her off to the hospital with a crossword book, and when I returned two days later, there you were, all pink and angry. <laughs> Nothing's changed. You're right, nothing has changed. You're still a pathological liar, and I won't have you meeting the people who are coming round this evening. After all, they are valued friends. Come on, Griffy, it's not the Queen. What's the problem with them meeting me? Well, I, I think it has something to do with the fact that one of them works for the Guardian, and Griff wants to get some work. Please, son. I can't go back inside. I've already lost five years of my life in there. They say in the paper that it's like Butlins, and honestly, it is nearly that bad. <laughs> Griff, he's done his time. I mean, some people do great things after they're released. He's been out two hours and he's already bribed a security guard and scammed his way into living here. This is hardly the release of Nelson Mandela. <laughs> What's this column you want to sell him in, son? I just think that The Guardian could do with a sort of informed, up-to-date info for young aspirational dads that I put up on my blog, yummydaddy.net and only.net. Some of the other sites with that name are not safe for work. <laughs> Go on, all this tape measure. Sure. If the tag has a range of 30 metres, then you've got the whole garden and probably about five metres of next door. And that is not an invitation to go next door. <laughs> so while you're inside enjoying all those fancy dips, I'm going to be out here leaning on the bird bath. Uh, no, of course I wouldn't leave you standing in the garden. You'd be visible from the living room, so we're putting you in the shed. <laughs> Don't you think he's spent enough time locked in a tiny room? Look, I don't want to hide him in the garden either. But if we can't get this box removed until Monday, then this is the only option. Linda is a highly respected journalist. She doesn't want to hang around with convicted criminals. No, that's why she left the sun. <laughs> Love this homemade guacamole. Anthony. Did we tell you about the time we ate fresh guacamole on the steps of a monastery in Mexico at sunrise? Yes, um, yes we have heard that story before, yes. Um, how are you, Trevor? Each avocado harvested uses a thousand gallons of water. Very bad for the environment. Oh. Uh, how does the environment feel about salsa? I'm allergic to salsa. It was on the list I emailed you. Yes, sorry, um, I, I didn't get a chance to read to the end. Um, <laughs> Griff is. Uh, Griff! Coming! Who wants taramasalata? Oh, yes, please. I can't eat taramasalata. There are literally 20 other dips. <laughs> These people are unbearable. <laughs> Shh. Um, who's looking after baby Stephen tonight, Pam? He's at my mum's. It's nice to have an evening of childcare. I can just concentrate on having fun. This is fun. <laughs> so how are things, Griff? Personally, I find being a stay-at-home dad very draining and not as fulfilling as I had hoped. If anything, my life seems emptier than it was before. <laughs> a never-ending merry-go-round of inane children's television and puking. I, I actually like it. Um, obviously, I'm still a journalist, which might interest you, uh, Linda. 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 Sorry, just taking a text from David Mitchell. He doesn't know what to be frustrated about this week. It's between Brexit and soap dispensers. <laughs> so, Alice, how's being back at work? Sorry, can I have your email address? Sorry? Um, so I can email you uh, about my blog. Oh, <laughs> it's David Mitchell again. Oh, he's going to link the two. <laughs> it's very clever. Try writing a daily blog about a baby when it can't even lift its own head. Sorry? <laughs> I, I was just thinking that maybe there might be um, room in the Guardian. Oh, my God. I'm not being funny, but there's a man in your garden. Oh, what? Over there. 
No, I can't see anything. Can you, Alice? No, I think you're looking at the bird bath. Is your bird bath shaped like a man smoking a cigarette? Uh, <laughs> I'll go and see what's going on. Let me come with you. I'm trained in the noble art of capoeira. It's a Brazilian martial art which elegantly fuses combat with dance. No, it's fine. I'll take a spade. <laughs> in Burma, we were mugged. He took our wallet, blessed it, and gave it back to us, wishing us a healthy and prosperous life. Yeah, it's not really mugging, though, is it, if they don't take anything? <laughs> he took our preconceptions. I would come with you, but I've wrecked my knees. Oh, how did you do that? Just standing. <laughs> uh, I'll deal with this. I'm sure it's nothing. OK, well, shout if you get into trouble. Ooh, David Mitchell says good luck. <laughs> Dad! Oh, hi, son. You haven't bought any food with you, have you? I had some quavers, but I was getting unwanted attention from a fox, so I panicked and threw them over the fence. <laughs> no, I don't have any food for you. I tried the bird feeder. It took me 20 minutes to get out one nut. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever wished I had a beak. <laughs> I tell you what, if I'm honest, I'm struggling here, boy. Oh, it's not the island with bear grills. You're in a suburban back garden. <laughs> Get back in the shed and stay there. Pam saw you. Come on, Griff, this is inhumane. You've got a kitchen that's completely empty. And that would have looked to your friends if they discover you keep your father outside like a dog. Well, right, you can come inside, but you have to stay in the kitchen. Nice one, Griff. At least there's a telly in there. She will not be touching. Don't make a sound, and under no circumstances are you to come into the living room. Have you got it? Loud and clear. Oh, have you got another pack of quavers? Or am I bringing this bird feeder in? I'm back! It was nothing. Let's crack open the barba ganoush. I'm sure I saw someone smoking. Oh, no. I think a bird had picked up a cigarette and left it on the bird bath. Oh, that's a shame. Anthony's been limbering up. I wish I could limber up. I dream of limbering up. <laughs> Sorry, where's your loo? I think this dip might have had spring onion in it. I'll spare you the details of what it does to me. <laughs> yeah, you go. I'll fill them all in. No, but... but... We're OK, Trevor. It's just at the top of the stairs. Don't mind all the baby stuff in the bath. Oh, it's funny having baby stuff lying about in the bathroom. Um, as I said in my blog, actually, it's hard to go when you're staring into the glassy eyes of a bath-time clockwork frog. <laughs> I don't know if that's the sort of thing that would make a good column, Linda. Uh, sorry, Griff, there's a man in your kitchen. No, there isn't. I think he's trying to eat out of a bird feeder. Oh. <laughs> Oh, him, yes. He's... he's... The babysitter? Yes, the babysitter. Right, why do you need a babysitter when you're in? Oh, can't be too careful. <laughs> he's a bit old, isn't he, for a babysitter? Years of experience, nothing he hasn't seen. He's like uh, babysitting's equivalent of Martina Navratilova. <laughs> Seems weird to get an old man to babysit. Normally it would be a teenager. I just think it's weird. Very weird. He's Griff's dad, your dad. Yeah, good old dad. Well, why doesn't he come in? He's busy uh, babysitting. But the baby is asleep and upstairs. Right, son. I'll be honest. I have been listening. And I know one of the young mums saw me. All right, love? So, since the cat's out of the bag, I wondered if I could have the telly on. Dad! Don't be silly. Come and join us. No. Ah, go on, then. Even if I could switch the telly on, the telly in there is absolutely tiny. It's even smaller than the one I had in prison. In his, in his flat, in the flat that my dad lives in and has lived in for the last five years. Isn't that right, Dad? Oh, yes, yes, that's right, my flat. Anyone want to go on this bird feeder? <laughs> so the doctor gets these tweezers and pulls an earthworm out of his ear. Oh. <laughs> and then as quick as you like, the doctor said... This kid keeps his ear to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent story. Bob, you approach a tale in the way I would hope to approach a cello, with passion, determination <laughs> and flair. Oh, David Mitchell enjoyed it too. <laughs> I think what the doctor actually said was this child needs an X-ray, a tetanus injection and a greater level of supervision in the sand pit. <laughs> Anyway, who wants another drink? Linda? Anthony? Shall I open another bottle of wine? Pam, do you want another room temperature water? Actually, oh, what the hell? I'm having such a nice time and I'm not driving. I'll have a squash. 
coming right up. Uh, Linda? Oh, yes, go on. I'll have another wine. I'll get it. I could do with a break from all of this frivolity. Uh, no, no, you, you stay here and keep an eye on the, the dips. Y yes, you're right. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the dips. So, what do you do, Bob? Oh, you're retired, aren't you, Dad? Yeah, you do nothing of note. You're just a man of leisure. Yes. Yes, I'm taking a bit of a career break at the moment, but I was in double glazing. They don't want to hear about that, though, do they, Dad? We haven't even opened the caramelised onion and chive. <laughs> we got double glazing a few years back. One of the companies we almost went with ended up being involved in this huge fraud case. What is a chive? I don't think I've ever given it any thought, actually. What, is it a sort of grass? Julian Lloyd Webber was telling me about how he was renovating an old pub in Tewkesbury and went to this dodgy company for new windows. Why? Uh, he lost a lot of money in the end. I mean, w when it went to court, apparently the guy in charge had stolen something like £600,000. Well, it actually was more like a million once you factor in the international arm of the operation. <laughs> well, the drinks will be here soon, and when they're here, we can all sip away at them in complete silence, because that's the great thing about having a drink, isn't it? You can't say anything at the same time. I don't know how you can begin to pull off a crime like that. In a way, it's quite impressive. It's actually pretty simple. Hi, hey, here we go. The key is opening a number of bank accounts under different names. Oh, thank goodness. Griff, you finally told them all about your dad going to prison. <laughs> no. What's this? Oh, see, now, doesn't that feel better when it's all out in the open? Oh, much like you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just Googled it and the chive is in the onion family. It's related to the shallot. Makes perfect sense when you think about it. Griff, why did you make Bob lie to us? It, it, it's second nature to him. He's a criminal. So he's done his time, hasn't he? I have. In fact, I still am. Thanks to this thing, it's an ankle tag connected to that box over there. See? I told you it wasn't Wi-Fi. She was looking at the back for the password. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming, guys. Oh, no, thank you for having us. And, Bob, it was so much fun to meet you. Mm, your prison stories were so raw and inspiring. I can feel the cello calling, and, with your permission, I would like to channel those feelings into a haunting cello sonata. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you go nuts. <laughs> I wish we had time to hear more of your stories, Bob. Well, if you want more, you know where I'll be. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't laughed this much since the doctor told me he thought one day I'd successfully eat a citrus fruit. <laughs> um, before you go, Linda, I've been meaning to ask whether you might be interested in me writing a column for you, something based on my blog, a kind of weekly dad and baby column. What do you think? Uh, sorry, Griff. Uh, we've sort of got that covered. Uh, ben Fogel is currently writing us a 3,000-word long read about how bringing up his children in a refurbished gypsy caravan made him embrace juicing. <laughs> so there's nothing you'd be interested in? I'm sorry. I'll tell you what, Linda, love. I bet Ben Fogel's dad hasn't been in prison. Couldn't Griffy write something about me? You know, living with my ex-con dad, who's a real personality? Uh, Dad, I, th I think you need to leave the journalism to the professionals, all right? Living with my ex-con dad. I can see people really going for that. Yeah? Oh, but the, the problem with that is that um, Griff's going to ring the probation people and get them to take away... Oh, the... no problems, Alice. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> what did you have to drink? Was it booze and guacamole? <laughs> guacamole. <laughs> Fab. Let's start with a few weeks and see where we go from there. Let's say a thousand words? You're on, as long as it's OK with you, Dad. Oh, yes. It'll be nice to be in the paper without the prefix disgraced. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on. I'll be in touch. Lovely to see you all. Good night. Thanks for everything. This has been the best night of my life. <laughs> yeah, when we signed up to the NCT, we were afraid everyone would just be boring weirdos. <laughs> night. Night. Griff, well done. You got a column in a national newspaper. Yeah, I did, didn't I? It does mean I'm going to have to live here for a bit. Just let me enjoy my triumph for a second, Dad. <laughs> Great quick thinking, Bob. Comes with the territory. Being a fraudster gives you a unique set of skills, whether it's convincing someone to pay up front for a conservatory, persuading someone to give my son a newspaper deal, or lying to someone about how much I enjoyed some guacamole. But you did enjoy my guacamole. Oh, yeah. It was great. <laughs> and 
Michael Tagg starred Ellis James, Katie Wicks, Steve Spears, Jason Forbes, Gemma Whelan, Oliver Maltman and Vivian Achampong. It was written by Gareth Gwynn and Benjamin Partridge. The producer was Victoria Lloyd. Ankle Tag is a BBC Studios production. That was the excellent episode one of Ankle Tag, and you can hear the other episodes on BBC Radio iPlayer. And I'm still joined in the studio by one of the leads of the show, Ellis James. Hello. And one of its writers, Gareth Gwynn. Hello. Thank you for coming in, guys, to talk to us. Um, Ellis and Gareth, you've worked with each other on several projects before, including the critically acclaimed Here Be Dragons. Yeah, who else was in that? Well, it's funny you should ask that, Ellis. It featured <laughs> Nadia Camel, Lloyd Langford and Carrie Ed Lloyd, I believe. Yeah, yeah. She, she was yeah. the best one, I heard. I, yeah, she, she could do the most Welsh accent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The critics loved her <laughs> yeah. in particular. She could do one Welsh accent. But still, what a belter. What, what a Bridget what accent a belt, it was. What a belter. Um, Gareth, did you write this with Ellis in mind or did you make him audition? We d- I, No, we didn't make you audition. No. We, 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 we went, Let's, we're going to put Ellis in this. Oh, cheers, mate. Because uh, I remember texting you and saying, <laughs> this is happening. Um, oh, it's who you know, guys. You have no choice. You know. <laughs> One word reply, yes. yes. I'm free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we did We did write this with Ellis in mind. We wanted to write a sitcom originally with the idea of like a real hypocrite oh, at right. like the, the centre of it. Yeah. So I think the very, very earliest version where we went, what could this be is someone who works for a prison charity who has to live with their dad who's a prisoner. Oh, and then yeah. we sort of built up all these other people and had this thing. And once we came up with the ankle tag, actually we went, no, that's the key bit. And then all the scaffolding came off. It's such Are a we... good conceit that it's, someone has to be somewhere at a time. It's really handy. Yes, yeah, so oh, nice. I say it's handy, the number of plots we come up with. Go, and then this could happen, then they could do this. Oh, it's after seven o'clock. <laughs> that's not allowed. <laughs> Bin it. That happens quite a lot. We'd like to thank the Home Secretary who put in the ankle tag. <laughs> I'm not sure Jack Straw, I'm not sure who it would have been, but... Um, yeah, cheers. Yeah, and, and it's one of those programmes that you end up gaining so much knowledge. Yeah, the research um, you have to do. It's, it's incredible. incredible. So the th- one of the things we found out, we spent an afternoon watching YouTube videos of... People trying to take off their tags. Yeah, or <gasps> no even way. better, people trying to just temporarily disable the tag. Oh, wow. so you could go out past and, seven. Oh, yeah, wow. but there's loads of stuff like that that we had to really bone up on. The thing with the ankle tag, keeping you in your home after 7pm has added a, a new device for sitcom writers, which, because they're taken away from us all the time by technology. Like yeah, for instance, phones. now, so many classic sitcom plots could have been sorted with one text. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the whole right of 40 Towers would be over with one text. Yeah, Sybil yeah. could text Basil. If Sybil and Basil were in a WhatsApp group... <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a five minute long. Have you series. gone to play golf? Yes. Yes. Dumb. Yes. So yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I'm at the golf course. I'll be back in an hour. Yeah. It makes me quite nostalgic. Whenever I watch anything funny from the pre-internet mobile uh, phone yeah. age, I think, God, those script writers had it easy, didn't they? <laughs> yeah. Um, Ellis, you are a relatively new parent. Well, yeah. Um, did this situation ring true to you? Did no. Gareth have to know? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Was I mean, Gareth having to ring you and ask you questions. No, who do you ring? Who do you ring about parents stuff? You don't need to ring anyone. They just <laughs> bang on about it all the time. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's so true. That's so true. I As someone that. who is a new parent, we do bang about it all the time. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think I do. I know enough people who are new parents, and they don't bang on about it. To be fair, but I think I know enough people to have got the keys. Buyer's morsis. Yeah, I think that's what it is to get the sort of cartoon outline of the bits. It's the that little everyone things. Will go, that's. The that, that go wrong just when you don't need them to go wrong. Oh, yeah. That is what can cause being a new parent to be very funny in a, a sitcom. For instance, I'm currently potty training my daughter. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, yeah, just, <laughs> just we. <wee. laughs> um, it's an incredible cast. Katie Wicks, Steve Spears, Moana Banks. Um, did you feel overwhelmed working with those people, Ellis? <laughs> uh, well... Steve Spears I'd met before. Katie Wicks I'd worked with, Steve but Spears, he is amazing. Oh, they were amazing. Uh, my favourite thing about Steve Spears is I was talking to him about potentially having cosmetic uh, dental treatment. And he said, no, 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 no. They're, they're just, they're robbing you. They're robbing you. What you want to do is knock a couple of your teeth out and then the rest will just straighten themselves. <laughs> That's what happened to me. I, I lost a couple of teeth playing rugby and look, they're straight as a die. Well, they're, they're not perfect, but they're normal. <laughs> <laughs> he, he oh made it God. sound so easy. One thing I did actually love about it, I mean, I loved it, but it was nice to hear such a, like, all those Welsh voices, but not have it be, this is a show about Wales. No, absolutely. We yeah. didn't want to go down 
yeah. that rose. And there's a couple of things we've been <laughs> deliberately. There's been a fake. fire at the Welsh cake shop. <laughs> it was nice. It wasn't like uh, <laughs> we had to make sure that it sounded like a real family. Yeah, that's the that's oh, the yeah, first yeah. thing. In terms of where it is, we've been deliberately vague. Oh, I thought about it was outside Cardiff. It. I no, it we've was... never said. You haven't said, well, have you? I just one assumed. of the reasons we've never said yeah. because, as well. In episode two, we are horrible about a local linen museum. Yeah. And I am terrified there is a that linen. if we say where we are set... The Linen the Museum of Carmarthen linen... closed today due yeah. to a radio programme mocking it. I don't want to deal with that legal battle. Yeah. But on Twitter this week, there was a guy tweeting me going, uh, I'm on my way to the Wool Museum in Valindra. Oh, yeah. Is that where ankle tags oh, set? Oh, God. And I went, no, absolutely not. So <laughs> not then far he, from where I grew up. The Wool Museum went, is a marvellous museum. I've got <laughs> yeah. nothing bad to say about it. He came out of it going like, well, there's a loom room just like in your sick. I'm like, no, <gasps> this can't happen. This can't happen. It's a coincidence. <laughs> loom We've room. We've tried really hard. So um, The fact that there is... The fact that there is a loom room he is claims there's a loom room. Oh, that's, that's yeah, a the National Woolen Museum in Valindra. A room of loom. <laughs> it's <laughs> not. It's very close to where I grew up. It's absolutely love not it where there. it's at. Brilliant, the loom room. Absolutely love it in there. Had my 16th birthday <laughs> party <laughs> yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got mashed in the loom room. It's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> crazy. So, yeah, no, we, 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 have not, we have not said where it is for good, solid legal reasons. Legal reasons. It's in Wales. It's not even in Wales. Oh, I'm not oh. even pinning it down that much. Oh, oh, I did right. some no. snogging in that loom room. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gary Dennis, thank you so much for coming in. Congratulations on a brilliant show. Yeah, I think you. it's excellent. Thank you very My much. pleasure. Thank you. thank you. Comedy of the Week will be back next week with more comedy all packaged up for you on a weekly basis. Thank you so much for listening. Be nice to yourself. You're tired. You're doing the best you can. And your best is good enough. Bye. Fig lover. Together at last, you and me. I'm Jane Garvey, your fig lover. We're doing the Fortunately podcast together. And what is it? So, thank you for that, by the way. <laughs> There's no no depth to your cynicism, is there? Uh, the Fortunately podcast is where we peel back the layers on an industry that we love. Yep. And we go and talk to top broadcasters about being top broadcasters. But when we can't get hold of top broadcasters, we'll talk to Sean Keaveney. <laughs> That's very mean. Well, it's just a fact. Uh, he's in this series. He's a friend of the pod. Also, we've got Greg James, nice young man from Radio 1, and I've got really high hopes we can go completely upmarket. And we're holding out for Sarah Montague. Sarah <laughs> Montague! <laughs> yeah. So this is series two of the Fortunately podcast, and it's all about broadcasting. It's presented by the legend that is Jane Garvey and the back end of her pantomime horse, which is me, Fee Glover. How do I get hold of Fortunately? Well, you can download it from your favourite podcast provider. You can also use the BBC web pages, or you can go via iTunes. Can I hear it on the radio? No, no I can't. you can't. No. Special, special Lady Garv Garv. It's very special indeed. If you like broadcasting, you'll like this. That's our hope, isn't it? It is. Yeah. But if you've got a spare, I mean, yeah. twenty-eight minutes, fill it with us. Actually, that's a that's our tagline, isn't it? If you've got a spare twenty-eight minutes, fill it with us. <laughs> I think that works. I used to be in advertising. I don't think it will. Anyway, we're stuck with it now. If you've got 28 minutes, fill it with us. No, rubbish. <laughs>